Hi, good morning everyone. We're gonna get started. Uh, so let's get going. We have some people in person. Uh, we have quite a few people online, so we're gonna be addressing both groups of people. My name is Simon. I am a community engagement coordinator coordinator of the puzzle. And first I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, we understand it's the university holidays, and yet uh, you are catering time, energy, and effort to attend this, which is really, really great because it means uh, you are looking out for ways to sharpen your teaching, uh, especially for your students. Uh, we also like to thank Dr. Hadi for this opportunity, and thank you for getting together. We also the Academic Development and Enhancement Center, and uh, for you know making this. Uh, available to all of the educators that are gathered today, and of course, others that will access the recording that we will uh, make available later. Uh, so, firstly, uh, just a little bit to get started. Um, I used to be a teacher, so I was teaching for 15 years before I joined Ed uh, and I was uh, a teacher in chemistry. So, if there are any engineers or chemists out there, uh, a special high card to you. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what are you doing? Uh, very cool. We can, we can talk more. Uh, anyway, anyway you don't talk about it. It's precisely it's this. is to reach out to educators. To get them started on that puzzle. is to basically show them how they can enhance their teaching and learning by using videos. Uh, some of you might have seen that QR code earlier on. So if you haven't done so, you can scan the QR code or you can key in the URL. And that's just a short overview of what Edpuzzle is about because some of us here might be 100% new to Edpuzzle. It's something that you want to get a taste of. Okay, so quickly uh, scan the QR code or key in the URL because I'm going to move on to the next slide right after this. Okay, now um, a few things. So, number one, um, there is an accompanying slide deck that you see on the screen. So you see another QR code. Now this one is a different QR code, okay? So just one was just a one minute video of what the puzzle is. This one is the overview of what we are doing today, step by step. So, you know, in case you wanna refer to it tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, you already have a copy. So same thing, you can either scan the QR code or you can key in the URL and then you bookmark the URL. So anytime you want to refer to any of the information we're covering today, you can just look at that. Now, in the course of trying out that puzzle, uh, you might encounter some technical issues. So whenever that happens, you see an email address, support at puzzle.com. So do drop us an email. We have a dedicated tech team uh, that is that will be glad to help you in any way that we can. Right? So just drop them an email, no worries. Just tell them what your issue is, and then they'll be glad to help out. Now, the thing about today is that even though I'm giving you the slide deck, um, it's not going to be a presentation, right? It's not a presentation, it's a hands on workshop. So, ideally, you should have your laptop with you. So, right now, if you're watching on your mobile phone or whatever, right, try to get hold of a laptop. Take, take a minute to get to your laptop because uh, we would love for you to do things together with me. As I log in, you log in, as I do this, you do this, because that's the best way to explore what this is all about. If it's, if it's just going to be a presentation, uh, you know, you won't really get a feel of uh, what's going on. Okay, so uh, for that reason, I'm not referring to the slide deck line by line, slide by slide. That is for your reference. Okay, today it is all going to be hands on. Now, we're going to do a couple of things today. Uh, we understand that some of you use Moodle. Right? But we are going to spend more time on Microsoft Teams. Uh, still, for Moodle, we're going to give you some information, uh, especially for the ICT team here at Even to be able to um, uh, enable you to integrate at Puzzle with Moodle if you want to. Right? But definitely, we hear that you know, some of you are using Microsoft Teams, so we're going to spend more time on how you can use Microsoft Teams, which you are already using with Ad Puzzle, so that you don't have to toggle back and forth, and it's a bit more smooth, it's a bit more seamless for uh, everyone involved. Okay, so first thing, uh, we're also going to send this to Dr. Hadi. So if you are keen on using Ad Puzzle and Moodle, uh, there are two resources here. It seems like a lot of QR codes, huh? but don't worry, this is in the slide deck. 
again, you can always refer to this at your own time. So don't need to scan it now. If you had scanned the slide deck just now already, just look at this later on. If you want to use a Python model, just refer to all the steps here. There's a video playlist. I think it's about five videos long, one minute, two minutes long. And then there's also a step-by-step -step process how you can have the integration. Uh, today, we're going to spend more time on Microsoft Teams and how to integrate that with AdPosit. So first things first, um, chances are you are here because you have been using videos or you're thinking of using videos for your lectures, for your lessons, for your interaction with your students, whether it is synchronous or asynchronous. Um, and videos are great. I love videos as a teacher. Students love videos. We all love videos for many reasons. For example, sometimes videos can capture the concepts a bit better, a bit more concisely, in a shorter amount of time. They can be interactive, they can be engaging. But with videos, there can be some issues as well. So for example, when I first started teaching in 2005, YouTube didn't exist yet. YouTube came out in 2006. When YouTube came out, teachers were happy. Right now, there's this uh, place where there are so many videos, but the problem is sometimes the videos are good, sometimes the videos are bad, sometimes out of a 20 minute video, only three minutes are needed for the lesson. Right? So there's an issue there. How do you get videos? So that's one thing I'll show you later. How do you get videos for your lessons? Uh, number two, sometimes I know my students well enough that I know that I need to customize the videos a bit more. Right? How can you personalize your videos such that they are catered to your learners? So it's not just uh, sending them a YouTube link. Right? How can you maybe tweak that so that you know it's catering to what they need to learn? Right? So that's issue number two. And number three, how can you tell that your students are progressing? Because sometimes you send your students a video, you ask them to watch it. How do you know that they're learning? How do you know that they've watched the video in the first place? Right? Can Edbuzzle track all of that? Yes. So we're going to talk about that third issue, about tracking your students' progress. Now, this session is going to be broken down into two. So the first 40 minutes or so is going to be basic things, like setting up an account, setting the video, editing the video, and so on. And then we're going to take a short break. And then for the second half, I'm going to show you some features that's going to help you along in really sharpening that pedagogy that you will have in your classroom. Okay, so it's about 40 minutes, then maybe a five to 10 minutes break, and then another 40 minutes or so. Okay, so uh, again, I'm gonna emphasize it's gonna be a hands on session, so make sure you have your laptop. Um, so, on your laptop, open up your browser. Now, we prefer the Chrome browser, right? So, open up the Chrome browser if you have one and go to adpuzzle.com. So, we're gonna, we're gonna take this step by step. Right, so you can see from the screen here, open up at puzzle.com and then open up the cheeseburger. So these three lines at the right hand corner, I call it the cheeseburger, right? And then go to sign up. Right now, many of you will be signing up for the first time, right? So I'm not signing up for the first time, so I'm gonna click on login. But most of you should click on sign up. And when you sign up, you should sign up as a teacher. And then don't enter the email and password here. Instead, scroll down and sign in with your school Microsoft account or the university Microsoft account. Right now, if you're wondering which account is this, it is the account you use with Microsoft Teams. So whatever account you use to sign in with Microsoft Teams, you should sign in with that. Okay, so I'm gonna sign in with Microsoft. Then there's gonna be a pop-up window Right, and then I'm gonna sign in. Now I have I already have an account, but if you're signing up for the first time, there will be a few windows that pop up. For example, it's gonna ask you what's your school. So just type in University of Korea. Right? And then it's gonna ask you what grade you teach, what subject you teach. So just put that in. It's very important that you key that in accurately, and I will tell you where it's from. Okay, it's gonna help you a lot. Because you know sometimes you, uh, some people oh this is just you know just uh, practicing playing around so you can you know key but um, it's gonna be quite useful for you so just take a few seconds key in your school key in your uh, level and key in your subject okay and let's wait for a minute 
so that most people have already done that. Okay, so I think some people are already doing that, so I'm gonna keep talking, and then uh, as I'm talking, hopefully more people will catch up now. Now, for those of you who have just created an account, and it's taking you to this uh, homepage on Netpuzzle, what you will see at the top of your screen is a blue band that says, that's asking you to verify your email list. You don't see it on my screen because I have already created the account, I've already verified my email. So if you see a blue band at the top of the screen, you should go to your email and just click on the verification. You should do it now. So I'm sometimes guilty of this, you know, when I sign up for this and that, uh, they ask me to verify, I'm like, uh, let's do it later. But you need to do it now because if you don't do it now, you won't be able to do some of the things that they're going to do later. Okay? Okay, so you see a blue banner at the top of your Adpuzzle homepage? At the top, is it there's a blue verify your email? Yeah, okay. So go to the email that you sign up for this account with. You should have gotten verify your Adpuzzle account email. And then it takes a few seconds, just click on it, then straight away, your account has been verified. Okay, so the reason we do this is we need to make sure that it's really, really you, because somebody else, you know, who knows, somebody else might have signed it for you. Okay, so do that. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the different sources of getting your videos. Okay, so um, as you verify your emails, also listen in, because the first few steps are quite simple. So you should be able to uh, try them out in your own time, okay? So first thing, um, I'm sure some of you have already been using YouTube videos, okay? So we can use YouTube videos in Adpuzzle. And how to do so? You see there is a field, if you follow my cursor or my pointer, there is a search field at the top. So think of the current module that you are teaching or facilitating, right? Maybe there's a certain concept, all right? And key in. So I used to teach chemistry, right? So I'm going to key in. Right? And then I'm going to click, I'm going to press enter. So I have results of so many videos here. If I scroll down, there's going to be a lot of videos, right? So I'm going to show you how to discern between these videos, how to make decisions about what videos, okay? And for this, Microsoft, yeah. yeah. Um, where was I? Okay, yeah. Okay, sure, I'll wait. Yeah, understand. Sure. Okay, so there's a request here to slow things down. So I'm gonna pause a little and wait for all uh, of the lecturers to sign in. Should request it. Uh -huh. So give permission. Okay, so, so just to repeat, okay, um, when you sign in, okay, I'm going to log out again, it's just so you know what's the flow, okay, so when you log in, log in as a teacher, don't fill in these fields, so email and password, don't fill in these fields because you have a university Microsoft account, right, so sign in with Microsoft. Make sure it is an account that you use for your university Microsoft Teams uh, 
learning activities, right? So sign in with that. So if it's the first time signing in, you'll be asked for a few things. You'll be asked for your school, you'll be asked for the grade level, you'll be asked for the subject. So fill that in. So once you fill that in, right, you'll be taken to this page. And you will see a blue banner on top that is asking you to verify your email. So make sure you verify it right now. Because if you don't verify it right now, there are many things later that you won't be able to do. Okay, so how to verify your account? Just go to your email, your same email that you use for Microsoft Teams, and then you click on the verification that is in that email. Once you click on the verification, you'll be taken to Apple again, and then that's it. So there's probably some things for you to agree, terms and conditions, and then once you agree and all that, you'll be taken to the Apple home page. Okay, so people who are joining us online, if you have any questions, please key it into the chat. So we already have uh, we already have one question. So Siti Nomaya is asking, is there a way to merge your accounts? The one I created earlier and the one with MS Teams. Uh, there is no way to merge your accounts. So the reason we are showing uh, how to log in with your Microsoft account is because that is necessary for integration. So precisely because you use Microsoft Teams in the university, all the classes that you create in Microsoft Teams would have to be linked to your Amazon account. Because if you use your personal account, then obviously that's not linked to your Microsoft Teams. So there's no way for you to have that integration now. Okay, so no worries. What this also means is you can create multiple accounts. Maybe you use your personal account just to try out, just to play around, and then you know for or university work, you can use your Microsoft Teams. Okay, so thank you for the question, Siti Nomaya. And uh, any other questions, please feel free to type it into the chat. So I was saying, um, there, were, there were three issues that I brought up when we use videos for lessons. Issue number one is, how do we get good videos? And there are a few different sources of these uh, good videos. Okay, so again, if you're with me, go to the top of your Amazon homepage, right? There is a search field. Key in any concept, any topic, any idea from one of the things that you are currently lecturing or teaching about. Okay, so for example, uh, my example just now was a chemistry topic of weights of reactions. So I just key that in, I click on enter, and then you see there are so many different videos. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a way that you can make decisions about what video to use. Right? Because sometimes we have the paralysis of choice. There's just too many things to choose from. So you see here there are three buttons, community, my school, and YouTube. Okay, let's click on YouTube first. So as the button says, these are videos on YouTube. But you also notice now there are a few buttons below that shows you several of the more popular YouTube channels. Right? So for example, if some of us would like to get a video from a TED Talk, Right. Apparently, there's no type of video on rates of reactions, so that's why it's empty. But if I go to the other channels, like Crash Course, I see a few, Heart Academy, I see a few. And if you can't find a YouTube video that you want here, what you can do is, you can go to youtube.com, look for the video there, and then copy and paste the whole URL here. And the reason you want to do that is because we want to make copies of these YouTube videos. Why? So that later you can edit, you can put in questions, you can make the video shorter. You can't do that in YouTube.com, but you can paste the URL in this field and be able to edit those videos to your liking. Remember, there's a second issue, how do we personalize or customize the video? Okay, so you can get specific YouTube videos by just pasting the whole URL here. You can try it out now. If you want to go to YouTube.com, maybe there's one video that you already had in mind to be using in class, paste the URL into this field, right? this short field over here, press enter, and then you see, oh, okay, I can now edit the video. 
Okay, now that's the that's one thing. Now, if you go to my school, so everybody remember the three buttons, community, my school, and school. So if you go to my school, what you will see is all the videos for that search result from the colleagues in your school. And that's why it's important for you to correctly indicate what school you're from when you created your account. Now, apparently there's nobody else in my school who has videos of rates of reaction. And that's the thing. Chances are you are working in teams of teachers. You are not the only lecturer teaching all the students, probably. Right? So what this means is you can be sharing videos easily with your colleagues. Because if your colleagues are the ones coming out the video, guess what? You can also use copies of that video. And it will be under this button, which is my school. Okay? And finally, maybe you want to cast our net, net further and wider. So if you're teaching a topic, but you want to know what other universities, other countries are doing, you can go to this button called Community. So these are videos by educators from all over the world. And that's why it's important to also indicate when you created your account, the correct subject and the correct level. Now, if you maybe accidentally chose that wrongly, what you can do is you can go to your profile. Your profile is in the top right hand corner. There's supposed to be a profile picture there, right? So if you click on it, I can go to my name. So Imran and Hassan is my name. When I click on my name, you can see here, okay, there are a few things. So when I go to school, I can change school if I want, and I can change my subject and group level. Okay, if you had uh, entered that wrongly. Right? So this is useful because it means you're not just confined to videos by your colleagues, but also globally. Okay, so guess what? This is only the first source. Yes, we have a question here. Uh, so can we break this? Uh, like we have other interests, like yeah. IT for example. I have yeah. other interests and I like to learn. Yeah. Can I use that as a learning tool for my own? Yes, of course. So if um, if you go here, right, like settings school right so if you want to learn about something else you can see here you can add another subject another grade level right so it doesn't have to be your primary uh, teaching subject it can be something else you're interested in and that means that when you search for things videos by other educators having the same uh, area of interest as you that will show up under community Okay, so we have a question here which is quite popular. Is there any copyright concern? So when we are, okay, so I want to mention two things here. Uh, when we are editing videos, number one, we are not editing, we are never editing the original video. So even for YouTube, huh, the original video, original video is still there. We are not editing it, we are making copies of it. Number two, we have a partnership with YouTube that allows us that's good, that allows us to do this. We have a partnership with YouTube that allows us to do this. So there is, it is well within the terms of service with YouTube. So it is completely above the table. Yeah, so there are no worries for that. Yeah. No, you won't be able to because all the videos will stay in at the bottom. Okay, you won't yeah. have yes, you can't download the videos that you edit. Yeah, you can't export it. Um, you can't export it as some other video. Yeah. So you can't re upload it on YouTube if that's what you're doing. Okay? Right. Um, guess what? That's only the first source. There are a few other sources because sometimes we want to create our own videos. Right? So for the people who are here in person, can I check? Anyone here has never ever created your own video? For example, a selfie video you send to your family. You have never taken an Instagram video, you know, something that you just create with your phone. Anyone has never done that? Right, let's see online. Uh, so people who are online, anyone has never created a video before? I'm not talking about, you know, lectures, I'm not talking about anything on your phone. Okay, not a single person has raised their hand. So, welcome video creators. We are all video creators here. And that means it's also very easy for you to put in your own videos. For your lessons, chances are some of you are already doing that. So if you're thinking, okay, how can I use how can I use Apple for this? You can. There are two ways, right? 
So follow along with me. Number one, if you want to edit a video that you already have, this is what you do. So follow along with me. Here. There is a blue add content button on the top right. So look for it, top right, click on it, and then the drop down menu, there are a few options. So click on upload video. Okay, when you click on upload video, there is a rich canvas here that allows you to drag your video over from your desktop, or you can just click on the blue button and then it gives you all the options from your, uh, from your computer. Okay, so whatever video you have, you can already upload. Now, the only limitation is that your video cannot be bigger than one gigabyte. Now, one gigabyte is huge. So I would say that again, one gigabyte is huge. That's like a movie. You shouldn't be uploading movie length lectures. Two, two hour lectures, you shouldn't be doing that. Uh, I'll give you some tips. You shouldn't be doing that. I'll give you some tips later on how you can cut down or cut your longer, cut your longer testing, testing. Cut your longer test, cut your longer video into smaller videos. Okay, so uh, try not to upload long videos. Now, a, a second way that you can create or upload your own videos would be to create a screen recording. Now, a screen recording is literally a recording of what is happening on your computer screen, and you can do this within. As possible. Okay, so there's one step I need you to take. Okay, so everybody, can you open up a new tab on your browser? So just open up a new tab, clicking on the plus sign, and then can you enter the search term together with me? Uh, sorry, it's at puzzle. Chrome extension. So I hope you can see this on the screen. In your browser tab, just key in the search term. Add Puzzle Chrome extension. So I'm going to get you to download a Chrome extension that makes it easy for you to record what's on your screen. Okay, so click on Enter. Right, and then the first search result should be the correct one, but let's verify that. Okay, so click on it, and then you should be taken to this page. So make sure you see this when you click. On the first, you, you should this you should do this now because we're gonna download it and you're gonna see what it looks like. Yes, we have Chrome. Oh, you don't have Chrome? Okay. Um, would it be possible to download it now? Yeah, it takes a few seconds. <laughs> okay, and 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 this is why at the start just now I said uh, we prefer Chrome precisely because it allows us to easily have this uh, extension. Okay, so key in this search term in your browser tab. Okay, sorry, it should be add puzzle. Sorry? Right, if you look at your browser, there should be a plus sign. Are you using Chrome? There should be a plus here, so click on the plus. So that opens up a new tab. Right, and then type in add puzzle Chrome extension. And when you press enter, the first result should be the correct one, but let's verify that. When you click on it, you should see what I'm seeing, which is this. Now, the only difference is if you don't have this yet, the blue button here for you should say something like add to Chrome. Yeah, so mine says remove from Chrome because I already have it. All right now, everybody click on the add to Chrome button, and that will ask you whether they can install this extension. So give the permissions. So say yes, allow, blah, blah, blah. And basically, what this is is it uh, embeds within Chrome a mini tool that allows you to record anything that you're doing if you want to. Now, this is really useful because imagine. You want to create a video where you are narrating as you are circling, typing, pointing things out, showing how things are done, pointing out differences. Can you imagine how powerful that is? That it doesn't have to be a slideshow, but it is a bit more interactive because you are signaling to the students, hey, I'm talking about this, this is important, I'm emphasizing on this. Okay, so everybody get this installed. So I'll wait a minute or two, and, and how do you know you have it installed? Once you have it installed, 
If you look at the top right of your Chrome browser, there should be a jigsaw icon. And when you click on the jigsaw icon, one of the extensions which is listed will be at puzzle. Okay, so that's how you know you're on the right track and you have it installed. So everyone, give it a go. And let me know people who are uh, online. So somebody online, Raha, is asking Safari can. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, it's called a Chrome extension, so it is only on Chrome. Okay, so if you are on Safari, what you can do is you can get the Chrome browser quickly, takes a minute or two, and then you sign in with the exact same credentials as just now, right? And then you get the uh, AppPuzzle Chrome extension. Uh, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah, as long as you have this jigsaw on the top right, and then one of the listed, okay, is add puzzle, you're fine. Okay, so I'm gonna start talking. If, if, if I'm going too fast, please let me know. I'm, I'll be happy to uh, reiterate any of the points I just made. Now, how do we use this? Let's say, okay, I'm gonna open a document again. So let's say I have a blank document. It doesn't have to be a blank document. It can be an actual full document. It can be a map, it can be an image, it can be a table, it can be anything, anything that's on the screen. And what you want to do is you want to talk as you are showing things. Okay, so this is how we do it. So let's say I want to type and record as I'm, I'm, I'm typing. So I click on the jigsaw icon. So try and try this out. Let's all do this together. So click on the jigsaw icon. Click on add puzzle extension. Right, and then there's going to be a pop up. So this is asking you, what do you want to record? Do you want to record a browser tab? So as you notice, I have four browser tabs open. So it's asking me, when I, when I say start recording, it's going to give me options. Do you want to record this tab, that tab, that tab, or that tab? Okay? Or do I want to record everything that's on my screen? Right? That's possible too. Or do I want to have only the camera and nothing else? That's possible too. Okay? Now, if I want to record my tab, any tab or the whole screen, i.e. the desktop, I can choose to switch my camera on or off. I learn to switch my camera on, not because I like what I look like, but because the students can therefore also look at me. Because as a lot of people know, a lot of us intuitively know, facial expression is very important in teaching and learning. Right? When you're emphasizing things, they're not just listening to your voice, they're also looking at how your face is uh, showing, uh, showing up as, okay? And then you can choose, if you have a favorite microphone, you can change the input and all of that. Now for this, I'm gonna record my whole desktop, okay? And then I'm gonna start recording. Okay, so it's asking me, how do you choose what screen you want to record? I want to record this screen. It just so happens that I only have one screen. If I have an external monitor, then they're asking me, do you wanna choose this screen or that screen, okay? And then I click on share, right? So now there's a countdown and currently this is being recorded. So what I mean is whatever I do, for example, I type, I type, that is being recorded in the video. So can you imagine this? You're showing them something and remember you can use images, tables, maps, documents. So it's very powerful because I'm pointing things out as I'm talking and doing things simultaneously. So later on for the second half, I'm gonna show you some extra tools, right? For now, I'm just gonna stop this. Yes. Yes, so you can see what I've done, I just done is I've stopped the recording. So I took a 38 second video and this is what the video looks like. You can see here, this is the video of me talking, right, as I'm typing. Let's, let's play the video to see. Right, so there are so many possibilities that you can do with this. And later on, we're, we're not gonna do it now, later, if we upload this video, we'll see that you can do things like cut the video. 
video shorter, put in questions in the video wherever we want and all that, but that will come later. Okay? So this is the second, sorry, this is the third way. Remember the first way is the YouTube. Second way is upload your video. Third way is you can make a screen recording. Editing later. We can edit any kind of video. Okay, so there's a question here from Dr. Hardy in person. He's asking whether he can stitch two or more videos together. Currently, we don't have that ability. So what I will do is I will stitch the video first and then upload it. Yeah, so you can use anything uh, you have like uh, QuickTime, iMovie, any free video editors to just put it together first. Okay. Sorry again. Yeah. Yes. So, so when you use the screen recording tool, so there's a question here. If you upload your video, can you edit only using a puzzle? So let, let's let's put it in context. If you want to use a video for an app puzzle video lesson. Right? And you want to do things like put in questions and, and all that, as we'll see soon, you need to use Apple. Yeah. So you won't be able to use another tool to put in questions and then you know use it as an app puzzle video. I have a lot of people another tool. For example, I have uh some people that have been part of the Yes, you can. So remember just now we search for YouTube videos? Yes. Yes. Yes, so we can. Okay, so let's let's get going. Um, there is one more source of videos, but perhaps uh, it's not too relevant. I'm just going to show you okay, if you're interested and you can. Oh, okay, sorry. So I, it's just been clarified that uh, it's not activated. So it's not activated, so I won't I won't show it. Uh, it's not that relevant to this university anyway, lah. Okay, so we've we've addressed the first issue. If you remember, just now I said even though there are things like YouTube videos, sometimes the quality isn't great. Sometimes you don't know where to start. So I've shown you three different sources of videos you can use for app puzzle. Okay, now the second problem is I want to make sure my video is relevant to my students. I want to personalize my video. So now we're gonna edit our videos. Okay, so this is what I need you. Uh, I need you to do. Everybody here and at home or wherever you are, I want you to choose one video. Now, how to choose a video? So just now I show you a few sources, right? So a very simple way to choose a video is just key in your search term, right? Uh, for example, differentiation, differentiation equations, right? And then from your search result, I want you to click on the video. So for example, let's, I'll give you a look. So same topic as just now, rates of reactions, right? So I have all the results here. Now it's just for practice. So it doesn't matter which video you choose. I want you to just click on the video. So for example, if I click on the video, right, I will get this. So you should see something like this. This is the page I want you to get to. So everybody, just key in a search term, open up a video, and see something like this. Okay, so do it now. And while you're doing that, I'm just gonna choose one video for myself. Um, maybe we do that for the second half. Yeah. Okay, hang on. Now. Let me just choose a video. I'm going to choose this engineering and urban habitat. Okay, so you should see something like this. Everybody make sure you've clicked on the video and you get to this page. So you should see like the video here. You should see three, sorry, four buttons edit, assign, copy, and share to view. Now, I want you to make a copy. Okay, so click copy, right? And then you see a, an announcement here, add puzzle copy to your content. Now, this is important, huh? so everybody listen up. You need to know where all your videos end up. Whether you upload a video, make a screen recording, or choose an, a YouTube video, all those videos end up in the same place. And the same place is here. So listen up. Huh? Look for the cheeseburger. Remember, the cheeseburger is the three lines. So here, the cheeseburger is at the top left-hand corner. Click on the cheeseburger, and then look for the button that says My Content. Okay, so again, uh, 
next to the Apple logo, there is a cheese burger. Click on the button that says my content. All your videos are here. Whether you upload your own video, make a screen recording, copy over a YouTube video, it's all here. Okay, as you, if you remember, just now I opened the engineering and urban tech and tech video. It's here. Okay, next. Everybody, there is a checkbox. Below your video, there is a checkbox. Click on the checkbox. And then you see some options pop up. Okay, so again, uh, below the video, Okay, below the video, there is a checkbox over here. Follow my cursor, my red pointer. Click on the checkbox. Then you see all of these buttons. Assign, edit, move to folder, and so on. Now we are going to edit the video. So click on edit. Now, before we get started, maybe you're thinking, oh, I don't want to edit somebody else's video. Don't worry, you are never editing somebody else's video. It is always editing your own copy of somebody else's video. So that original video is never touched by you. Okay, so don't worry about that. Yes, you do. Yes, so this is well within everyone's terms uh, of service. Okay, even for YouTube. Okay, now there are a few things that you can do. Number one is to trim the video. So let's talk about trimming. Why is it important to trim? Remember just now I told you, you shouldn't be uploading two after lectures. Okay, there is a study by Vanderbilt University that show that for college students, so this is where you come in, huh? for college students, any video past 12 minutes, the engagement plunges. These are 19, 20 year olds. Some of their students are 19, 20. Beyond 12 minutes, they stop paying attention. Okay, so what you need to do is consider how you can make shorter videos. Now, it doesn't mean you need to throw away your half an hour video. You need to be able to cut the video into two or three. Okay, even within one video, you can remove some things, the music at the start, the, you know, the thing at the end, you can, you can cut it. So I'm going to show you how to trim your video first. All right, so everybody, can you make sure you've opened up a video for editing, and then you, you are seeing this page exactly as what I see. Okay, so what usually I would do is, I would play the video to see where I can cut. Right now, there are two play buttons, huh? so everybody pay attention. There's one play button in the middle here. That is not the one you press. Look for the one below, the one in black. See in the bottom left hand corner. So when you play, how do you know you're, you're uh, choosing the correct one? When you click on play, you see this button below start moving. So you see here, this black ball starts moving. So that's the correct button. Okay. So I want to do is I want to make decision. Okay, maybe the first eight seconds not necessary because it's like introduction la, music la. So I want to cut it, right? So what do you do? I pause the video. So remember just now this, and then I click it, click it again to pause it. There's a button next to it that says add cut. So I'm gonna add cut. And when I add a cut, can you see that the blue bar below has now been cut into? Because now they're showing you, okay, you are, we are splicing this video here. If you want, you can remove any of it. So remember, I wanted to remove the first eight seconds. So please do this together with me, okay? Don't wait until I finish because there are a lot of steps. Do this together. All right, I'm reminding everyone at home as well. Okay, now what do I do? I choose the segment I want to delete. How to choose? Click on it and hold. Then I drag it to the left. So drag it. How do I know I'm doing it correctly? When I drag it all the way to the end, can you see? Now there is a trash can. I still haven't let go up. When I let go, it is gone. Okay, now let's say you made a mistake. Oh no, actually I don't want to delete. No worries, there are two buttons. Button number one, undo. It will undo your last action. Button number two, reset. All the changes you made will be restored. Okay, so no worries about uh, doing it wrongly. Now, I don't have to watch the whole video to make decisions on when to cut. If I've watched the video before and I know, okay, I want to cut here, exactly at this point in the video, right? So I just drag, see what I did? I drag the black ball to the point of time of the video where I want to make the cut. In this case, it's three minutes, 45 seconds. Okay, and let's say I want to make a cut. So same thing, I make a cut, 
same steps as just now. I click on that segment. I drag it this time to the right because I want to remove the end. Then there's a trash can. I let go. So now it's asking me, hey, are you sure you want to delete this? Because there are some questions. Yes, I want to delete this. So I'm going to choose yes, cut and delete. Okay, so you can tell now my video is a lot shorter. It's almost half as long as the original. Now, here's the thing. You can cut more than just the beginning and the end. You can cut anywhere in the video. Okay, so let's try. So same thing, drag the ball anywhere you want. Let's say you watched a video before, you know exactly at this point, I want to start to add a cut. So I have a cut here. So this is the beginning of the middle cut. Then maybe this is the end of the middle cut. So I drag it over and I click on add a cut. Same steps as just now. Drag it in either direction until the trash can appears. Let go. Hey, there's a question. Are you sure you want to delete? Yes. I'm going to delete that. And you can see, wow, it's a lot shorter. So when you play the video, it is as if uh, this first blue part skips to the second blue part smoothly and seamlessly. Right? So that's what you want to do. You want to make the video shorter. If you're happy with this, that's it. That's how you cut the video. Can everyone try? Just make sure you are able to cut at least one portion of the video. This is just for practice. It doesn't have to be the uh, so-called correct se section that you want to cut. Okay? Now, we're not done editing because there are more things we can edit. Now, once you're done with cutting, go to the second button, which is called voiceover. Okay, so everyone, let's click on voiceover. Now, you might want to add your own audio recording when maybe you made your own video and you realize you made a mistake. So maybe you want to you say something, hey, everyone, uh, when I was recording the video, I made a mistake. So actually, it should be A, not B, right? Or maybe there is a concept that you want to emphasize, right? And you want to put in your own voice to emphasize that concept. So what's going to happen is, when you click on start recording, let's try. When you click on start recording, my voice will appear and be layered over the original recording. Okay, so let's press stop, right? And two things appear here. Number one, you see there is a like an audio player here. So to preview your what you just recorded of your voice, you can press play. You don't like it, you can trash it and record again. Number two, now if you notice, below the video, there is a yellow bar. So that yellow bar tells you at this point of the video, your voice that you just recorded is going to appear. Okay, again, uh, it's not two audios playing together. Your voice will be overwriting whatever audio there is in the video. Now, that's a catch. Some of you might have chosen YouTube videos, right? And you will see when we are in this voiceover button, it says, oh, you can't have a voiceover because that is not within YouTube's terms of service. So how do you get around this? Create your own videos, right? As long as it is not a YouTube video, you are able to layer over your own voiceover. Okay, so that's what I mean. Yes, we have a question from Dr. Hadi. Uh, sorry? Uh -huh. Probably, yeah. Okay, so Dr. Hadi's question is, can we just uh, screen record a YouTube video? I, we would not recommend that you do that because that's, uh, well, yeah. I, I don't want to get into the details, the terms and conditions, but it doesn't sound right. <laughs> so probably not something we would recommend, okay? where you want to have the voiceover? Yeah. Yes, okay, so that's a great question. So can you select where you want to have the voiceover? Yes, remember there was a black ball just now when you were trimming the video? So see, this black ball is here. So anywhere I want, I can move it around. So when it moves around, hang on, huh? Okay, so now it's at 17. So maybe I decide, oh, I want to have a voiceover here. Then I start recording again, right? I want to jump to another one. I just move the black ball over, right? Maybe just to be sure, you can press the play button as well just to make sure that that's the correct spot when you want to have the voice over. Okay? Um, so there was a question, and the question is exactly what I mentioned, which is YouTube voiceover is now blocked. Yeah, so that's exactly the point 
that I said just now. Okay. Um, is it is this a good time for the short break? Shall we pause it? Okay, so everybody, um, we're gonna take a five to seven minute break, right? If you want, you can play around. Maybe just now you didn't have a chance to try trimming, you didn't have a chance to try uh, recording your own voice over. Try it out now. We're gonna start in five to seven minutes time. Sorry, we're gonna continue in five to seven minutes time.
Hi everyone who is here in person or uh, online, we're going to start in two minutes. So if you can hear me, quickly get your coffee, get your tea, get your kuih lapis, and uh, we'll get going in slightly less than two minutes. Okay, folks, welcome back. So uh, the reason we have a break is because we don't want it to be one long, one and a half hour. You know, it's, it's important to have that break. And if you can use this principle for your own video lessons, uh, that would be great. Because if you can imagine, uh, as adults, we cannot be sitting and watching something for one and a half hours. Unless it's a very, very good movie, right? So if you consider video lessons, there's no way your students will be able to as well. So this is why we are, I'm adding a few tips like, you know, your video should be this short. Later on, we're going to add questions to the video and that will help as well. Okay, now just to uh, recap, uh, what we're doing in this section is everything that helps us to personalize or customize the videos. Because, you know, when you get videos, uh, maybe only three minutes of the video is useful. Maybe there are things you want to ask your students about the video. Maybe you want to put in your own voice. So all of this helps to make a video your own to cater to your learners, right? So we don't just send them a URL, a YouTube URL. We try to make it a bit more customized. So, so far, we've learned how to cut the video, uh, trim the video, and we've also learned how to put your own voice in. Next, I, this is my favorite. We're now going to put in questions in the video. Now, when I was teaching, this is the feature that really sold me on AppPuzzle, right? I was, I've been an AppPuzzle user since 2015, right? So long time ago, even before the pandemic. And what I love is, can you imagine this? Students are watching the video and then suddenly the video pauses and then a question pops up. And until the students answer the question, right or wrong, doesn't matter, until they answer the question, the video cannot continue. Right? So there are so many possibilities here. So let's take a look at some of the things that you can do. Like. So, again, you can choose where you want to put in questions. There are two ways. Like. One, you can watch the whole video. Remember the black play button? Right? Or if you know exactly where, then you can scroll the black ball around. Okay, so either way. Let's say at 32 seconds, I want to put in a multiple choice question. So make sure the video is paused at that point, wherever that point is and then click on multiple choice questions. So everybody make sure you do it now, right? It doesn't have to be, you know, a correct, a so-called correct place. It's just practice. Just put your black ball somewhere in the video, click on multiple choice question, and then just type in a question mark. So let's say, right? Now, when you put in a question, a multiple choice question, there has to be at least one correct answer, okay? So let's say I put in A, and then I put in B, 
until I indicate which one is correct, I cannot continue. I'm talking about the educator's point of view, okay? So let's say I decide, okay, B is the correct answer. So you can see there's a tick, there's a cross. So I'm choosing the tick to tell at puzzle that the correct answer for this question is B. Now, this is important because all multiple choice questions are automatically graded. You don't have to be the one grading. So the moment the student chooses the answer, they will know whether it's correct or wrong. You can also see what they chose up. Because you, if you want, you can present feedback, but you don't have to be the one marking manually. And that's great, right? Imagine your lectures and your classes of so many people. You can see at a glance, oh, okay, how are my students doing? Now, for multiple choice questions, minimum of two questions, maximum of five. You can have more than one correct answer. If you want to have more than um, you, have, you want to have more answer choices, you can click on this phrase below, add another answer choice, and then you can add it up to five in total. Okay, so just a few things that you can do as well, especially for the science, engineering, mathematics-based lecturers. You might be excited about this mathematical expression. So again, I'm going to show you where it is. So let's look at the question. Huh? There is this FX button. So when you click on it. You'll see all the mathematical and scientific symbols, can put in equations and all of that. Now you can do this for the question as well as for the answers. Okay? Now another thing you can do next to the FX button, you can see an image icon. So let's say you want to have the question or the answer or both as pictures. You can do that too. So let's click on it. And you can see here it asks you to upload your own image from your computer. Okay, so sometimes things you ask or things that they answer might be better represented in the form of a picture. Right? Think about what you can do for your own subject area. Next thing, maybe you want to hyperlink any word in your question or answer. Right? So what are the possibilities here? Let's say I have a question here that requires them to refer to some data to a table, to a diagram, to a picture, to another document, to a research paper that's found online. So what I can do is I can highlight any word, right? And then I click on the chain link. There's a chain icon here, right? When you click on it, it prompts you to add a URL. And when students click on that link, it opens up a new tab. Because sometimes you can't fit like data and tables and everything in here, right? But you want them to be able to access it. So that's how you can hyperlink. And this, again, can be done for the answer choices as well. Okay? So three things. Mathematical expressions, images, and hyperlinks. There's a fourth thing, which is feedback. So imagine this. Let's say they get a question correct. Right? You want to give them encouragement. You can. Let's say they get a question wrong. Not only do you want to give them encouragement, you want to point them to the correct steps. Hey, you got this wrong, you can watch this short video on YouTube to correct that misconception. So how do you do that? You can click on feedback. This can be done for both correct and wrong answers. If you choose to, this is optional. Okay, so click on feedback, type your feedback. Again, it doesn't have to be text. Remember, be creative. It can be maybe a YouTube video that is already out there. You want them to watch it just so that they learn from your mistakes. Okay, so that's the fourth thing that you can do. Now, once you've done, I, I hope you're doing this with me. So everybody, can you take a minute now, put in a simple question, put in one correct and one wrong um, answer choice. And then, okay, I'm going to remove this one, so there's only two. And then when it's done, scroll to near the bottom and click on the blue save button. So let's click on save. And then it's going to show you a preview. Okay, this is not confirmed yet, this is a preview. So imagine, again, students are watching at 32 seconds, this question pops up, then they choose A. So they'll be told that they are wrong. They choose B, they'll be told they are correct. Right? If you're happy with this, you can click on continue. If you want to edit it, you can click on the pencil icon. Or you want to delete it altogether, you can click on the trash can. Okay? Don't worry, even if you click on continue, you can still edit it later on. How to edit later on? Okay, let's click, click on continue. Oh, this one, if you want to add more questions. Yeah. That means like at 32 seconds, you want to add another 
a second multiple choice or different kinds of questions which we will cover later anyway for people online so there was a question here what are these small boxes if at the same point of time you want to add more than one question you can so just for example another multiple choice another open-ended which we'll cover later and so on okay so let's take a continue and see maybe you change your mind you think oh actually i want to edit the question so you see the small black bubbles below these tell you where your questions are so if you click on them you see okay let me click on another one huh. why is there a lag sorry uh, for people at home there's a bit of lag here <laughs> And yeah, it is. Okay, anyway, while we wait for the lag to resolve itself, if you want to go to any question that is embedded, just click on the black bubble which is below. Okay, so let's see whether we can add another. Okay, I'm going to cover the second kind of question. So not only can you add multiple choice, you can add open ended question where students don't have a choice. So let's go to a different point of the video. Okay, now the lag has resolved. So let's go to a different point and play the video again. You can either play the video or you can move the black ball around. But it's lagging now, so it's a bit difficult. Let's click on open ended question. So if you're able to, especially at home, right, click on a different point of the video, pause the video, and then click on open ended question. So a favorite question I like to ask for open ended is this. Because this kind of question, what do you find difficult so far? It really forces the students to kind of think back, okay, I've learned this so far. What am I not 100% about yet? It really asks them to dig deep. It's not an easy question to answer, which is good because we want them to work with that. Okay, so I ask this, and if I leave it as it is, right? If I press, if I click on save, what's going to happen is same thing, video plays, video pauses at this point, question pops up. They have to type in the answer right it's not just ebc anymore okay but we can power up this question even more now you see everybody take a look can you can you everybody make sure you're on open-ended question there is an option here to allow the students to respond via audio okay so i'm going to turn this on and when you turn this on the students have a choice they can either type in the answer or they can turn on their microphone and record a short answer. Now, why might you want to do this? Last time when I was teaching chemistry, I realized that when I ask students verbally for this kind of audio response, the misconceptions show up very easily. Because you know, when, they, when they're typing things out, everything is written out, everything is like prim and proper. So I can't really see the misconceptions easily. But when they try to describe it themselves, they start using the wrong terms, they start using the wrong ideas, which is good, which is okay. Because this is exactly the point where I want them to show me that misconception because I can, we can all address it right now. Okay, so that's one, one reason for me, maybe for you, maybe you just want to have some variety. A very important reason to do this is choice. Your learners are all adults, young adults. To give them that choice is powerful enough already because they then recognize that you are recognizing that they do have a choice. And that's good because you are involving them in the learning process. Okay, so you can, I we highly recommend that you allow audio responses. Same thing as just now, when we click on save, it's going to show you the preview. Okay, we don't have a preview. Oh, we do because it's embedded within the first question. Okay, sorry, apologies for the lag. But we can't see the preview because of that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's try. Uh, hmm. Okay. Anyway, same thing as just now. You want to see the preview? Click on save. It will show you what the students will see. If you're happy, you click on continue. If you want to edit or you want to trash, you can. Okay. Now let's go on to the last kind of question, which is called a note. Yes, we have a question here. Yes. Yeah. So that's one consideration you have to make. Like now, when you allow audio response, they they have a choice. So you need to recognize that it's, it doesn't mean that they have to have an audio response unless you tell them. Uh, 
So if your instruction is you must submit an audio response, then actually if they want to, they can still type now, right? But then because you require them to, they will have an audio response. But if you don't say anything, they have a choice. But recognize the I the fact that yes, it's possible that then you have to listen to a lot of audio responses. Okay, so what I do, right? I tell them, okay, everybody record an audio response of less than 10 seconds. Now there's no way for, for us to manually limit, but because I say 10 seconds, usually they try to keep to it. Nobody will talk for five minutes now if I say 10 seconds. That's okay. So we have a question here. Um, does it mean that when the students watch the video, there is no need to refer back to the lecture because they are answering and we know the answers? Um, yes and no, because it, number one, it will depend on the kind of questions you have. Because only multiple choice questions are auto created. Open ended, it might be useful for you to look at their responses and be able to address them. Okay, so that's after everything. Yeah, that's the last one. Okay. Oh, so Dr. Hardy had the same question. How do you look at the student responses? Uh, later, we'll get to that. We are, we are, we are not there yet. Um, where was I? Okay, so let's talk about the third kind of question, which is a no. So same thing. You can either play the video or you can scroll the black ball anywhere, and then you can add a note. Now, I like to add notes in three different places, right? Firstly, I like to add a note. A note is not really a question. It is like a declaration, an instruction, a reminder. Right? So I like to add a note, number one, at the start of the video. So I would like to scroll my ball if the internet allows me, right, to time zero. Why? Because sometimes I don't use my own videos. I use somebody else's video. But I want to tell my learners, hey, everyone, it's still me. Right? I'm using this video because I think it's very interesting. So enjoy your learning. Make sure you watch until the end of the video. So I can either type that in. So for example, I say, hi, everyone. Right? And then, even before the video starts, right, there's no pop up. Right? And then you know, okay, it's still Mr. Imran, so no problem, it's still our lecture. Right? And I also like to do this at the end of the video because I want to give them reminders hey, I hope you enjoy the video. We're going to see each other next Tuesday. Make sure you bring your lecture notes. Right? So I scroll all the way to the end. Right? And the note is there. Now, I also like to do it in the middle. Because if it's in the middle, it allows me to emphasize concepts and ideas. Maybe the video is mentioning a certain definition, but I don't want to move too quickly. So I put in a note because guess what? The video will pause. The note pops up. Hey, this definition is important. Make sure you, if you want to, you can play it again. You can play the video. Uh, you can play the section again. Right? So I put in instructions, I put in reminders, I put in emphasis, and I can also do this. So you notice that uh, I can type, but I can also record. Right? So I can have both. So recording is really great because it is worthwhile to introduce my voice into the video, just so that it makes it a bit more personal. Right? It's not just them interacting in the video, I'm still kind of interacting with them on a, on a more personal level. Okay, so that's what the note, how I use a note. And same thing as just now, I can use mathematical expressions, images, hyperlinks in my notes. So same thing, if I save, I get a preview, I can edit, I can delete, and so on. Um, okay, uh, no, a note is only at, at that point of time. Yeah. I mean, you can put in more than one note. You can put in as many notes as you want, but that's just one note at that point of the video. So the question is, um, if I can put in one note for the whole video, uh, no. Um, if you put in one note, no matter how long it is, after the note, the video will continue playing. Okay? Okay, so everybody, before we finish editing, can you make sure you put in at least one multiple choice question? Okay, so everybody put in at least one, just multiple choice. Right, we're just, we're just practicing here. And once you put in a multiple choice question, can you look for the finish button? The finish button is in the top right hand corner. So let's click on 
finish. Now, when you click on the finish, it gives you a preview. Hold on, let me just pause there. Right, so this, nothing has happened yet. If I want to, I can still go back and make changes. The edit button is there. Right, so I can still remove things, add things, trim, everything is the same as just now. Okay, so you can play around with it. And right now we're gonna assign the video lesson. Okay, so before we assign, let's see whether we have questions. Now's the time because once we assign, it's gonna move past everything already. Uh, especially the people who are watching online, if you have a question, you should put it in right now. If you don't have a question, what you should do is, can everybody open your Microsoft Teams? Um, ideally, it should be the desktop application, not the browser. Because right now, like most people are on Microsoft Teams, right? Can you make sure you have your desktop app open? Or if you're able to um, concurrently work both together, that would be great as well. No, 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 you need to join. You don't need to join. As in, what I mean is, um, we are going to assign this video lesson via Microsoft Teams. Right? I'm talking about different from this, this meeting that we're having, okay? I'm not going to assign to you, right? I'm going to use Microsoft Teams to assign to a class I have in Microsoft Teams, okay? So, this is my Microsoft Teams. My Teams is called Final Year Chemistry. If you want, you can quickly create a fake class. I, I hope you are able to do that because maybe you don't want to assign to an actual class you already have. So just quickly go to Teams, create a fake class, and that's all you need, okay? So this is what we need to do. Now, here, from here on, there are quite a lot of steps. Okay, so make sure if you find yourself lagging behind, feel free, just uh, ask me to pause. For people online, no problem, just unmute yourself because chances are I'm not looking at the chat, right? Just unmute yourself, hey, uh, Imran, can you slow down a bit for me to see that? Okay, no problem. So where do we go? Now, you should go to, firstly, your team that you want to assign the lesson to, okay? And then go to apps, right? Can you look for apps in the left-hand menu and click on apps, right? So you have like everything here, right? Let's search for app puzzle. So let's in app puzzle. And then the app puzzle app should show up here, okay? So click on it, then you're taken to this, to this page. Okay, I'm gonna slow down here a bit because already we have like three steps. So I'm gonna repeat the steps. Look for apps in the left-hand menu. Then in the search field, click on App Puzzle. And then when you when you click on App Puzzle, this should pop up. Uh, May, can you let me know if there's any question or whatever in the chat? <laughs> okay, can. thanks. Okay, so what do you do? Don't click on open, right? There's, a, there's an arrow here. This arrow allows you to add to different things. I want to assign it to my team or my class, right? My class group, which is final year chemistry. So I'm going to click uh, on, I'm going to click on add to a team. Okay, so add to a team. Then these are all my teams uh, in Microsoft Teams. So my class I want to assign to is called final year chemistry. Right? So if you realize, oh, I don't really want to assign this to my real class. So again, like I said just now, just go back and create a fake class. Okay? So my class is final year chemistry. I'm going to click on that. Okay? Yes? Okay, so we had an issue here. So uh, one of the lecturers here, she created a fake class, but then when all the options show up, um, her fake class didn't show up. I think it's because it's limited, the space is limited. So what you can do is you can just start to type in the name of the class and then the class options will appear.
Okay, so we are here right now. So again, if you have a question, people uh, who are online, just uh, type it in and then uh, we'll talk to you. So when you see the blue button in the top right, okay, I'm going to click on the arrow. Don't click on the setup. I'm going to click on the arrow and then I'm going to click on setup tab. Okay, so click on the arrow, setup tab. And then it's setting up the tab. So I'm going to show you where the tab is later. Okay, so what it's doing is, remember just now, right at the very start, I asked you to uh, log in using your Microsoft account. And that's what it's doing right now. Right now, it's linking your Microsoft Teams class with a class that we're going to create in Edpuzzle that is mirroring this current class you already have. Now, what's powerful about that is it means your students do not have to create an Edpuzzle account. And you don't necessarily want them to because it means, oh, I got to log in here, log out there, log in here, log out there. Everything is now in one place. Okay, so there's just a few things. So remember just now, uh, think, think back to what your class is. My class is final year chemistry, so I'm going to type that in. So it's asking me for the description. I'm going to type in final year chemistry. And I think my grade level was grade 10. Subject is chemistry. Right. So your choice whether you want to post to the Microsoft Teams channel. I'm going to leave that on. And then I'm going to click on next. Right. So. What this means is there is a class which has been created in Edpuzzle, which is exactly like your current Microsoft Teams class. Okay, so I'm going to click on save. Um, okay. Okay, so we have a few lecturers here who say that when they try to do that, they have to ask the IT admin for permission. Is, is that right? Yeah. Okay, so all the people here and uh, for online, people who are online, chances are you'll see the same thing. Okay, no worries. So this is something that we we'll have to bring up to the university IT department. Probably there are some things that are uh, not, uh, not opened up yet at the university level. So uh, it's okay, you can talk to the IT admin and then I know you send them some information regarding what you need to do. Uh, still, I want to show you what you can do, right? Because once that is open, it means you can do everything that I'm showing you, and that's going to be really easy. Now, if you see what just happened is, when I link the class, it takes me to this page. And this page is basically the add puzzle page, right? Yes, so remember just now I chose set up a tab and you see this puzzle tab has shown up. That means later on when I assign any videos, this is the video, sorry, this is the page that I see. And remember there was a question just now, how can we tell what students have responded and not It's all going to be here. Right? What are their answers? How many people have watched? How many percent of the video they have watched? How many people got it correct? How many people got it wrong? Everything is going to be here. Even down to what are the marks that they're getting? Okay, so let's see. Doria, this is recorded. Chances are some of you can't do this, but this is recorded. So once we get it opened by the university IT department, then we can try this out. Okay, so I'm going to show you how do you assign using Teams. So let's go to assignments. Okay, just just follow along. Okay, you don't have to do this since you aren't able to. So when we go to assignments, right? We're going to create a new assignment. And we're going to assign, it, it has to be an assignment, not a quiz, right? We're going to assign an add puzzle video lesson. Okay, so let's just type in some information. Right, and this is important, huh? so if you're watching the video two weeks, two months into the future, if you want the grades to sync, that means, you know, when they answer multiple choice, it's auto graded, you can assign points as well you need to set the points here to 100. Okay, so people from the future, hello. <laughs> Today is the 10th of March, right? Make sure you're adding 100 points to the points here, okay? 
Now, how do you uh, assign the Apple Group video lesson? Under instructions, click on apps. So let's click on apps. Right, just now we already installed the app puzzle app. So, yep, it's right here. So, I'm going to click on that. And then, remember just now there was a folder called My Content, and I told you all your videos in there. Ah, this is exactly it. And remember for me, I edited the Urban Habitat video. This is the one, uh, the one we cut, the one we put voiceover, the one we put question. This is one, right? So, I'm going to click on this. Right, if I want to, I can preview it again. Right, okay, I'm gonna pause it. As you can see, remember just now we had some questions. Remember the black bubble below the door here? Okay, yes, I'm satisfied. This is the correct one. So I'm gonna click on assign. Right? So when I click on assign, I have some more options here. So firstly, you, you can see here there's a button that is turned on by default. And when this button is turned on, it means the students cannot skip any questions. Until they respond to the question that pops up, the video will not continue playing. So that's why we have it turned on because most teachers find this very useful. If for some reason you want student, uh, student to be able to skip the question, okay, then just turn it on, no problem. Okay, next. If you have multiple choice questions, at least one, you must have at least one, you are able to set multiple attempts. Okay, so what this means is this. By default, it is one. If the attempt number is one, it means right or wrong, the student can only complete the video lesson one time. If the multiple, sorry, if the attempt is more than one, it means if they got at least one multiple choice question wrong, they are given an opportunity to do it again if they want to. Right? So imagine this, huh? let's say I set it as two. So let's say there's one multiple choice question. Right? The student got it wrong. At the end of the video, a message will pop up. Your teacher has set multiple attempts for this question. Would you like to try it again? Then they can choose to go back to the question. So when they, when they attempt it again, they don't have to do the whole video again. They can just go to the questions that they got wrong. Okay, now what are the different numbers of multiple attempts? As you can see here, it's one, two, three, four, five. I cannot see, but there's unlimited as well. Okay, actually, if you scroll down a bit more, under five, there is unlimited. That means they can try as many times as they want. So you can turn that on as well. Okay, so once you have access to this, give this a try. This is a new feature. It came out less than a month ago. Right, so give it a go. So now we are going to assign. Okay, so it says here, okay, it's assigned. And when I click on save and I return to assignment, I just need to just finish up any other details I want. Right, customize whatever, and then I click on assign. Okay, so you can see here, I'm sure some of you have assigned uh, assignments to Teams, so it is almost exactly looking like a normal Microsoft Teams assignment. Okay, so let's look at data. Now, there were a few things I mentioned just now. Number one, how do I get group videos? Number two, how do I customize videos for my students? Number three, what data can I have? How do I know that my students are progressing? So let's talk about data. Now for data, let's go back to adpuzzle.com, right? So for most of you, you have not assigned the lesson because you don't have access to the Microsoft Teams, right? So I'm gonna show you the kind of things that you will know. Uh, let's see whether I can have here. Okay, so this is the, okay, I'm gonna show you again. Huh? So everybody, you can do this just that you haven't assigned the lesson, but you can do this as well. So click on the cheeseburger. What's the cheeseburger? The three lines next to the Pet Puzzle logo. Right? Click on it. So now, remember just now we linked, or I linked the two classes. Maybe some of you weren't able to because of the IT permissions. I have final year chemistry. Just now it wasn't it. But now I just linked it, it has appeared. So let's click on the class called final year chemistry. Remember just now through uh, Microsoft Teams, I assigned this engineering uh, uh, an urban habitat, right? So this is the assignment I just assigned. And when I click on it, assuming I have students who have done it, I'll have the information here. Now, obviously now I don't have students, right? But later I'm gonna log out, I'm gonna show you uh, data when I do have students. And we can use that data 
to decide what to do next. Okay, let me give me a second. Let me just log out. I don't have students on my Microsoft account, but I have students on my Google account. So let's log in so that you can see what the data looks like. This is my Google account. Okay, let's see now. This is the one with data. No. Okay, give me a second. I have a few classes here. Oh, is it university? Sure. Ah, okay, thank you. Right, so for a different class, I had some fake students now. Okay, so this is the assignment I set out. So when I click on it, now you can see, oh, there's student one and student two, right? So I can see at a glance, oh, okay, student one hasn't finished watching, right? And if you have 30, 50, however many numbers in your class, you can see all the individual data. And you can see at a glance, okay, most of them have watched it. Maybe student number one, I need to drop him, a, drop him an email and ask him, hey, you know, it's past the deadline. Uh, any reason why you haven't watched this? And if I want to find out even more data, I can just click on the individual students. So let's click on them. So when I click on a student, you can see, okay, so watch 30%, attempted one, but then again, I only gave one attempt, right? Grade is 75 so far and definitely has not finished watching because, see, not turned in. If it's not turned in, that means definitely they haven't watched all the way to the end, okay? And then I can also remember just now someone's asking, how do we know the responses? So when I click on individual students, their responses are here. Okay, so this is an open-ended question, right? And this is their open-ended response. If I want to, I can create the open-ended response. This is optional. If I click on the cross, you get a zero. I click on the tick, you get a hundred. If I want the mark to be somewhere in between, I can manually in the numbers. Again, this is optional. Only multiple choice questions are auto graded. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So for audio response, if the student only has an audio response, there will be an audio player here. And I can just click on play to listen to the response. Same thing, if I want to, I can create and all kinds of questions. I can give feedback. See, you see there's a comment uh, comment function here, right? This is an open-ended question. I can, I already put in a comment. That's a good opinion, right? I can put in whatever feedback I want, even for multiple choice. The next question is a multiple choice. I can also give a comment. So think of comments creatively. It doesn't have to be good job or try harder. It can be, hey, there's a video here. You can watch it if you want. Okay, you can put in a URL in the comment. So when the students log in, they get a notification. Oh, your teacher has left a comment, so you'll be taken to that. They'll be taken to that comment when they click on it. Okay. Yes, Dr. Ali? Uh, the yes. Yes, okay, great question. So, if you recall just now, I wanted to look at student one because, hey, this student only watched 30%. Let's find out more. If I want to, I can look at the questions that I put in instead of the students. So you can see here there are two tabs, right? One is students, one is questions. So let's click on questions. So when I click on question, I can see, oh, this is how the class did. Out of two people in class, one got it right. Second question, both of them got it right. So you can imagine like your class 30, 50, with that information, you can decide, is this something I need to address again? Or is this something I can move on? Because most of the class are okay. Maybe there's just one or two students I need to check in with. Okay, so yes, you can go by question type as well. Okay, thanks for that, Dr. Hadi. So, so yep. yep. Ah, you have to go by, yeah, yeah. Okay, hang on, huh? you can go by the question. Okay, so let's say this one, huh? let's say there are 100 students. Uh, you saw, oh, 13 students got it wrong. I want to know which 13, then you click on the question. So you click on this, then you'll tell me, oh, okay, these are the students, these are the students. Huh? Yes. 
Um, can. Okay, so go back to the students now. Okay, so this one is the question, right? So go back to students, right? So click on individual students, right? And then you can change this grade if you want. Yes, because that one is questions. This one is students. The grade is the the grade is tied to the student, not to the question. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, so if you want to look at questions, the information you have is what who are the students that didn't get it correct? Okay? So you can read that Yeah, understand. Yeah, uh, the reason for that is because we tie the grade to the student now. and because we have the individual accounts and because the grades can be synced with Microsoft Teams, that's why it has to be tied to the individual accounts and not uh, to the question. Because the questions is, you know, it's not, it's regardless of accounts. Uh, you know what I mean? Okay, um, I think this, this is something quite new to most people, right? So if you have a question, please type in your uh, question on the chat, right? Uh, the question here was about, can we grade students according to the question? So uh, in the Ambassador system, it's two different things, students and questions. Questions, we are able to see what, how the class did. We are also able to see what individual students responded. Uh, but for the grading of the response, you have to go to the students tab, not the questions. But I, I, I get what you mean. I think maybe uh, it's true. Maybe some uh, sinking, oops, no battery. <laughs> maybe some sinking of these two things might, might make it easier for lecturers. Lah. Okay, I'm, I'm going to speak up a bit more because I think the battery of the microphone just died. Okay, uh, do we have any questions about the data before we move on to the last part? Okay. Uh -huh. Uh it's it's yeah, it's a it's a different it's similar to teams. So that's uh is that like uh customized? Oh okay. Uh if that is on Moodle, yes. if that's on Moodle, so in the slide deck I shared with you earlier, I'm gonna show you, there are some instructions here on how you can uh integrate that with Moodle. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a bit different. Um, and for this, the IT admin again has to be has to be involved. Because actually this one even more so. Because it's a lot of things that they have to turn on. Yeah. 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 For which one? Yeah, yeah, so, so that's why we have to get the IT admin. Uh, sure, yes, okay. Um, okay, so any other questions on especially data? Uh, data? Okay, so no questions, so we're gonna, we're gonna move on a little. I'm just gonna show you a few things that you can use to enhance your teaching and learning, okay? So one of them is something called live mode. Okay, so let's go back to my class. Okay, sorry. Huh? Um, you can do it in Puzzle, right? But you won't be able to do it in Teams yet until the permission. So you, you can try it out in Puzzle. Huh? So everybody, right? What you can do is open up your assignment. Uh, oh no, you don't have assignment yet. Okay, so everybody go to my content, right? 
and then choose the video that you have just now, right? Let's say it's this one, right? And then click on assign. Now we're just playing around with this, huh? so let's click on assign. And you might not have a class yet because you're not able to uh, create a class that is linked to Microsoft Teams. So if you don't have a class, what you can do is you can just add a new class, right? So just add a new class. Again, I'm going to show that again. So here is the assign page. I'm going to ask you to add a new class. Don't connect to Microsoft Teams because you won't be able to do so as you have seen just now. So just create a new class, enter the details, right? And after you've done so, your class will show up here. For example, for me, I have a few different classes here. Okay, so choose a class that you want to assign it to, right? And then you can choose the start date, you can choose the due date. Remember just now, you can choose if you have one multiple choice, you can change the number of attempts. Right? And once you're happy, you can click on the blue assign button. Now, the reason I want you to do this is because I want you to try out this feature where you can use this video lesson in class with the students at the same time. Right? But first, you have to assign the lesson. So everybody, assign the lesson to the class that you just created, and then you'll be taken to this page. Okay, so everybody, I'm just going to wait for a while. Just make sure you have chosen one video assign it to a class that you have just created. And once you've assigned it, it will be taken to this page. Right, so I'll just wait for Yes. Yes, uh, this one just for play, because in, in reality, you'll be linking it with Teams. But this one, we I just want you to create a class just so that you can assign it and you can see what I'm talking about later on. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna start talking. Huh? So when you have assigned the video lesson, this page gives you a lot of the information that you need. For example, when your students start to play the video, right, you see the information here. For example, I have a fake student called Imran Abdullah, right? The, this poor student has not watched, right? He's not keeping up with his work, okay? And then same as just now, I can look at how my students responding questions okay so let's go back and i want to point out this button called live mode so everybody can you can you make sure you, you can see this button right let's click on it right click on live mode okay so there are some steps for you here so let's set the context huh? chances are some of you already assign videos to your students as homework okay what if you could do it you could do the video lesson at the same time live with your class. Now, this is whether you are all in the same place or whether they are all at home or whether there's a mix. So imagine 80% of your students are in class, 20% woke up late or got COVID. <laughs> so they are at home. Okay, so what do you do? Ah, la, la. Okay, then I need to uh, sign in with Microsoft Teams. I need to share my screen. So for my 80% who are in the room, it's on the projector, no problem. But because I'm sharing on Teams at the same time, it means my students at home also can see what's happening. And once you click on live mode, right, you should tell the students, hey, everyone, join in, sign in to your Edpuzzle account, right, and then a message will pop up on your device. Your teacher has just started a live lesson. Okay, let's, let's have a look. Now, here we are on teacher mode, so we can't see what the students see. But when I click on start live mode, it shows here, Let's say there are 30 students of, in my class. It will start at 0 out of 30. Then as students are joining in, the number will increase. 1, 10, 12, 29, 30. Once I see everyone is in, then I click on start. If you have tried things like count, things like quizzes in class before, this is like that. Just that it is with video. Okay, we, we are, I, I, I dare say we are up there in terms of video learning. So if you consider how can I make my class, my live classes more engaging, but I want to control the video, right? This is what you can do. Okay, let's see how it works, huh? When is... Um, 
they can, right? But it's good to have everyone join in. That's why that's why there's a stage now. Yeah, otherwise, you know, a lot of people are uh, lagging behind. Okay. Now, once I click on start, right, you can see the video. And the difference is you have full control over the video. Okay. So, for example, uh, even though there's a question there, okay, let's continue. Come on, uh, I put it. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's continue. Okay, hang on, let me go back and try again because I have too many questions at the start. So all the questions started popping up. Okay. Let's go. Skip. Skip. Okay. So even though there are questions, I remember the questions are the, the black bubbles, right? I can forward the video or stop the video anywhere I want because I'm the teacher. Right? I don't have to follow what's in the video. So imagine this, the video is playing, but I want to make a point. I can pause the video, I can stop and say, hey, everyone, so this part, uh, I want to rephrase it because you know the narrator said it in a different way, blah, blah, blah. And then I continue, I continue playing the video. Now, I can also skip to questions. So like this one, right? The next question is here. I don't want to wait. I want to go straight to the question. So I just click on the bubble, right? And when a question pops up, Remember, this is the now the projector, whether it's a projector in class or on Zoom or on Teams, right? Everyone sees this picture, but on their own device, whether it's a laptop or phone or whatever, only the question pops up for them to answer. Right? So remember, it's something like Kahoot, right? The question pops up, you have to answer. So when they answer, 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 and then I, I will see, oh, zero has answered, 30 has answered. Once I see most people have answered, I continue. And what's going to show up here is the overall class response. For example, 27 people got it correct. There's going to be a bar in green, 27. Three people got it wrong. There's going to be another bar in red, green. Right? So we can all see as a class, okay, most of us understand this. Let's move on. Or maybe I decide, wow, more than half of you have no idea what this is. Let's talk about it again. Let's watch the section of the video again. Right? And guess what? Because they answer individually on their own device. Remember the data we talked about just now? The individual data is captured in the same place. So if you want to, after the lesson, you want to go back, take a look at the individual data, it is all there. Okay, yes, your question? Ah, yes. Yep. Ah. No, uh, so remember I'm projecting. So we're all watching the screen on their phone or on their laptop. They are not watching the video. The only time they uh, need their device is when the question pops up. Because the question will also pop up on their phone or their laptop. Mm, okay, yeah. No, no, no. Okay, so, so for everyone online, the question was, Will the students be uh, using their device to access the lesson? Okay, so I'm going to lay out the context again. Huh? The video for this mode, this is called live mode. The video is playing only on your classroom projection. Or if you are uh, sharing screen on Teams or on Zoom, on that as well, right? So on live mode, the students will not have the video playing on their device at the same time. The only time they need to access their phone is when it comes to the point of the video where the question pops up, it also pops up on the screen because all the responses are still individual. Okay, so they key in, they key in, and then you can track. 10 have answered, 15 have answered, 20 have answered. When you press continue, currently what we're seeing on the screen right now is, it's gonna show, because obviously I don't have students, right? It's gonna show, how many of the cards got it right, how many of the cards got it wrong, it is anonymized. So the names do not appear here. However, you still have access to individual reports. When you access the class later on, you can see student A put his answer, student B put his answer, student C put his answer. So you still have that data in order to uh, take any steps that you need. Okay, now here's the beautiful part. Okay, if I see, ah, yeah, there's no more time. 
right? Okay, class, we have to stop. So I'm gonna click exit live mode, right? What I can tell my students is, class, um, there's still 10 more minutes in the video. So what I want you to do is when you go home, log in and finish the rest of the video. So they are still able to do that. They still have access to the video. It's just that it's no longer on live mode. So it's self-paced, back to self-paced. Huh? And all the data will be in the same place, right? So remember just now we did some in class and now you're doing some at home. We still have the individual student data. We still have the data by the individual questions as well. Yep, question? Okay, so the question here is, what's the difference between assigning through Adpuzzle and assigning to Microsoft Teams? The difference is in the accounts, right? So right now, the only reason I'm asking you to uh, create something in Adpuzzle is because you weren't able to for Microsoft Teams because the IT admin needs to use it. Where are you on? Are you on Adpuzzle or? Yeah, 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 that's, that's Adpuzzle. Uh -huh. um, I don't think you can integrate it yet because I, yeah, okay. So so let me let me let me clarify. Uh. So the intent is for you to embed Ad Puzzle within Microsoft Teams so that anything you assign will be in Microsoft Teams so that your students don't have to create yet another account. Right, if everything is in one place, it's a lot more seamless and easier for everyone. So the only reason we are going on Adpuzzle to assign and all that is so that you can see for yourself, oh, okay, this is what we can do. Right? Once you have the full integration, once the ICT department has um, uh, opened up an integration, then you will be able to do that within Microsoft Teams. Right? And yeah, that will be easier for you as well. Okay. Of course, if you want to, you can also create just an Adpuzzle account, but it means that you will have to ask your students to create Adpuzzle account. So if that's not a problem, then sure, you, you, can, you can go ahead and do that. Okay. Right, now, just two more things, and I'm going to mention them briefly, right? The last two things for this session. Uh, number one, you, what if we could flip Adpuzzle? So far, we've been talking about teachers looking for videos, teachers putting in questions, teachers sending the videos to students. What if we make all of that terbalik? We make all of that the other way around, right? Students look for videos, students put in the questions, students submit to you. Now, why would you want to do that? Because it means now you are making them creators. And that's what we want from our students. To be valuable members of society, they need to create and produce not just consume, right? So imagine you have an assignment for them, hey, find a suitable video or make a suitable video to illustrate this concept. I want you to put in two multiple choice questions and one open-ended question, and then they send it to you, okay? We can do that. Now, how to do that? So make sure you're on appuzzle.com. I want you to be clicking on the buttons, huh? So appuzzle.com, look for the blue add content button in the top right, click on it, so the last option is student project. That is what we call the feature that allows you to flip the video lessons so that students are the ones who come up with it. Right? Let's see what it looks like. Click on student project, right? Put in instructions here. So as many details, usually I do things like, okay, find a video that is maximum five minutes long, put in at least one multiple choice and one Right? Make, make sure it's as detailed as possible so that they don't disturb you and ask you more questions on how they're supposed to do this. Now, here's the beautiful thing. You can choose to get them to either find an already existing YouTube or create their own video or both. Either one. Right? They have a choice. So it depends on what you want from your students. If you don't want them to be bothered by you know, having to create a video, Right? You just want them to look for the concepts, no problem. Even when they find their own YouTube videos, same thing. They can put in the questions exactly like how we were able to just now. Okay, so what does this look like? 
they'll get the assignment, they get a notification as an assignment when they open it. Depending on the choice that you have, they'll either be taken to a YouTube page embedded within Edpuzzle, or they'll be prompted to upload a video, or both. And then they'll be taken to the editing page that looks exactly like what we saw just now. So they have the exact same function. Sorry, exact same functions. You can trim, voiceover, you can edit questions. All types of questions that we also saw just now. When they submit to you, and here's the most powerful thing, you can choose to the open. You choose the top three. Use, use those videos to send to the whole class for them to complete. So can you imagine how powerful that is? Instead of you telling them you are always the expert, you are using their own peers to teach the whole class. Right? Imagine the power of that. Okay, that's number one. Second thing. So we've just enabled this literally one hour ago, right? Uh, I don't know whether you can see it yet, right? But you have access. If you, you can't see it, maybe refresh or you know log out and log in again later. So if you click on the cheeseburger, remember cheeseburger is next to the logo, cheeseburger, there is gonna be a button here that says add puzzle originals. So remember, just now I told you there were three sources of videos. Number one, YouTube videos, number two, your own videos, number three screen recordings. Now there's a number four. And original videos are basically videos created by Edpuzzle. They are high quality, really, really great videos because we have our own team of curriculum specialists. Right? Let's, let's have a look. Now, most of these videos, they are geared towards the younger students, but because they are all customizable, you can remove questions, add questions, trim, exactly like how we did just now, all the editing can still be done, right? You might be able to find some videos that are still relevant to your area of study. So you have access, again, if you don't have access, log out and then log in again later. If uh, somehow you can't see, maybe just let Dr. Hardy know and then we'll sort it, sort it out, right? Explore this, because all these videos, they are based on uh, standards in the schools in the US. Like for example, uh, for this subject, students should be able to do this, 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 this. So all of these are crafted to address those standards. Unlike YouTube videos. YouTube videos, sometimes people create it just because. Right? They're not following any particular set of standards. But all of this is based on standards. Right? So my advice is explore, see what you can find, whether there's anything useful, and then just same thing, just copy over the videos, and you can edit and uh, make them more personalized for your students if it is applicable. Okay? Okay, cheeseburger, originals. The second button is original. Yeah. If, if you can't see it, refresh. If you still can't, then log out and log in again using the same account. Okay, maybe log, log out and then log in again using the same credentials. Okay, so um, that is pretty much it. So we're just gonna open up the floor for questions. And if you have questions, just type them in. Um, Dr. Hardy, is there anything for them? For the people who are coming online? Oh, there's a survey form, so don't go yet. <laughs> an attendance form. Oh, I think it was sent earlier. It was sent at 10.44. So I just scroll up and check. Attendance form is there. Feedback form is there. Uh, after that, are they, are, are they good to go? Okay, so after you have completed... Yeah. Okay, so the people who are online, we have some freebies for you. It's uh, it's a it's a bag, it's a tote bag, and I think uh, is it just a bag? Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna show the bag. This, this is hot. It was hot cakes. Okay, like um, we gave this away in, in Singapore last year. There was a conference in Singapore. It was a it was a three day conference. By ten a.m. on Thursday, it was gone. We had hundreds of it, and it was all gone. Okay, that's bag. So it's being left at the ADAC office. So when you're back in, in school, back on campus, 
uh, go down to the headache office, just tell them who you are, and uh, you can get a free bank. It's still there, it's still there. Yeah. You won't delete it. Microsoft? Yes. Yes. Even after. Yeah. Free. The limitation is that the free version will be 20 videos. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, one gigabyte. If you upload. If there's any video online that is already on YouTube that is two hours long, sure. But like I said just now, it's not recommended. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Is there anything else for the attendees? If you don't have questions and you've done the feedback, you've done the attendance form, Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate that you chose to spend your Friday morning with us. Uh, we had a great time. I'm really glad that you're doing good work in your lecture halls and classrooms. All the best, and let us know if you need any help or advice. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>